Hello and welcome to another episode of the Leo Alves podcast and in today's podcast episode I'm going to discuss with you the Mediterranean diet and the reason why I'm going to speak about this is because I was thinking about the Mediterranean diet this evening because it came up with in conversation with someone and then I had noticed that I never made a piece of content on it or like specifically about it. I might have lightly touched on it here and there but I've never made a specific piece of content on it. I think on any platform, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, podcasts included. So here I am today and I'm about to do that with you because I feel like that's quite overdue that I do. And uh, you know what, before I do get onto the Mediterranean diet talk, I do quickly want to say that I really can't be bothered to record today's podcast episode. And you might be thinking that's quite a random thing for me to share, but this podcast episode is about being real with you, 100% transparent. I don't want to act like I'm always motivated even when I'm not. But what I do want to emphasize by sharing this point is that no one else is going to do it for me. And sometimes we have to do things when we don't feel like it as well, which is something I frequently try. Like it's a message I try and push on this podcast specifically for when it comes to your fitness journeys. Some days you're just going to have to turn up on days you don't feel like it because again, no one else is going to do it for you. And I'd be a hypocrite in that case. So with that said, here I am and I'm going to speak to you about the Mediterranean diet. So What is the Mediterranean diet? Well, it's an eating approach based on the traditional foods of countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea, which includes France, Spain, Greece, and Italy. So which foods does it primarily consist of? Well, to go into it or through it in no particular order, first up, we have a bounty of fruits and vegetables. So think leafy greens, ripe tomatoes, crispy cucumbers, and peppers. And these are not just sides on the Mediterranean diet, but like they're central parts of every meal, packed with vitamins, minerals, and fiber. And then you've got the whole grains as well, which are another pillar, including foods like whole wheat bread, brown rice, quinoa, and then you've got the nuts and seeds along with the olive oil. Uh, These are key sources of healthy fats as well, and almonds and walnuts and sunflower seeds and extra virgin olive oil. And I think I already said that, but olives too. And these are all used generously for cooking as well and or dressing foods up. So there's a lot of healthy fats going in there too. And then there's the seafood. The Mediterranean diet encourages eating fish and shellfish, uh, shellfish, I should have said, several times a week, providing high quality protein and omega-3 fatty acids, which is crucial for heart health. So there's a lot of good stuff you're seeing so far. And then, you know, cheese and yogurt are included too, uh, but not as emphasized as the other points. And then, oh yeah, I almost forgot, you can't forget about the legumes, beans, lentils, and chickpeas, which are sources of protein somewhat, and fiber too, making them, you know, nutritious additions in a variety of dishes. And then interestingly, while the diet does come with moderate consumption of poultry and eggs, red meat isn't really mentioned anywhere. And you know, on that note, there's nothing it says you shouldn't eat. Like the Mediterranean diet doesn't outline or doesn't say don't eat this, this and this, which is why I like it, but I'll get into more depth on that later. But you might have noticed there's no mentions of like sugary beverages, highly processed foods, refined carbohydrates and fatty or processed meats, specifically meats. And that brings me on to another point and that it's One reason why I really like it is because I like how the diet is more about general guidelines, principles. It mentions foods you would generally do well to include rather than telling you to follow strict rules and have these, all these, yeah, just things that you have to adhere to on a daily basis, which just sometimes I feel like, or oftentimes it makes just your everyday nutrition much tougher. Instead, it says, you know, you would do well to prioritize this and this and that. And you know, on this note, let me get into like the first major point that I wanted to bring up. And that's the fact that I really like its inclusion mindset or you go into it with an inclusion mindset and not an exclusion one, which I think is really helpful because like I said, it's all about emphasizing the abundance of foods that are really good for you. So think about it because you're filling your plate with a variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, healthy fats, protein sources, which means you're really giving your body what it needs and nutrients and things it loves and things that it needs to thrive on. And it's a diet that celebrates or an eating approach that celebrates the joy of eating foods that you would do well to include in your daily meals, which makes it less likely or you less likely to therefore overeat in foods that you shouldn't eat you shouldn't eat as much of 
like the sugary treats or you know foods high in fat salt and sugar for example like the highly palatable foods highly processed foods because when you're consuming all these foods that are very good for you like again the fatty fish the vegetables the fruit the whole grain because you're going into it with all this inclusion type of with this inclusion type of mindset and you're prioritizing those foods so much more you're naturally going to have less space to overeat on foods which again you really don't want to be eating anyway or eating much less of which means that you just naturally eat foods that are much better for you and it just happens quite nicely and naturally without like that exclusion mindset of having to approach every single day of saying oh i can't eat x y and z blah 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 which sometimes makes life stressful as well now i want to bring up another point too which is it's not magical for weight loss and i feel like this has to be mentioned because sometimes people will go into the Mediterranean diet or they push the Mediterranean diet frequently online like it's some sort of magical solution for fat loss, but it's not because it's important to clear the air here. While this way of eating is incredibly healthy and it does support a healthy lifestyle, it's not a diet designed for fat loss because like any approach to eating, the principles of calories in versus calories out still still applies. Yes, even with the Mediterranean diet, it's possible to gain fat if you're consuming more calories then you're expending. Now, in response to this, I'll sometimes hear, oh, but Leo, it's not just about calories. It's about the quality of the food you're eating as well. And yes, I'm not denying that. That's true. It is about the quality of food that you're eating, which is you know, basically what I've been saying throughout this entire episode, that the Mediterranean diet pushes foods that are really good for you. But at the end of the day, when we're speaking about fat loss specifically, the fact that this gets pushed as a fat loss diet sometimes online it just doesn't make sense because it's not that at the end of the day you have to still be in, you have to still ensure that you're in a calorie deficit now with that said and done which was one important point i really wanted to cover and now i have i want to speak about accessibility challenges as well and i feel like this is very important to speak about because sometimes if you're in the mediterranean great or close then great you might find this quite easy to follow but And I'm not even just speaking about the Mediterranean diet here specifically now. Sometimes people around the world, they'll want to start a specific diet, maybe like the Japanese diet, let's say, or the Mediterranean diet. Whereas they live on like the complete opposite side of the world in which typically eats in a very different way. And then they, but they want to follow that way of eating because maybe they've heard it's the best way for optimal health online and that they must be doing this approach, not realizing that the fact that where you live doesn't eat anywhere like that let's say okay i'm going to say let's say you live in japan but you want to start eating the following the mediterranean diet it's going to be very tough for you to follow it in japan because again that's not really what's local to that place like you might be able to do it somewhat with a lot of conscious effort but it's going to be it's going to be much tougher for you and you might if anything start to find it more stressful and the reason why i bring this up is because i remember when i was living in london I had a family member who told me they wanted to start, they were going to start following the Japanese diet. And of course, the reasons why was because this was quite a few years ago. I had this chat was because Japan has one of the lowest obesity rates in the world, one of the highest life expectancies. And obviously a big factor to that is the way they eat. At face value, that makes sense. Okay, if they eat like that and it's doing all these wonders for them, why don't we eat like that here as well in London? Why don't I eat like that? But now the issue is, your environment isn't set up in the same way a Japanese person's environment is. There's so many other factors that goes into it that got that goes into it that makes someone living in Japan eating the Japanese diet much easier for them to be consistent with and follow. It's the same for the Mediterranean diet for people in the Mediterranean. If anything, you might start finding it more stressful than anything and then you might start it actually perhaps has the opposite effect because you're always trying to worry about and search for ingredients that are very hard to come by within the area that you live now the reason why i mentioned that isn't to sound like some sort of debbie downer or some sort of pessimistic person is to be a realist and to let you know that you know if you can't follow it to a t wherever you are that's okay because i want to encourage you to to let you know that it's not about following if you want to start following the mediterranean diet somewhat but you live on the opposite side of the world let's say or very far away then it's about trying to maybe take inspiration from it as much as possible okay so maybe you would do well to emphasize more healthy fats or more whole grains or more vegetables if you can't follow it to a t that's okay 
take inspiration from it and take the parts that you do like and you do feel like you can be consistent with wherever in the world you are and and implement that and the reason why i bring this up again is because i don't want you to stress about having to follow it to a t where when maybe you live in a country that it's just very hard to come by some of those ingredients like olives for example or i i don't know or quinoa do you know what i mean so yes just bear that in mind moving forward and now one other thing i do want to mention before i start winding down this mediterranean diet podcast episode like i said it wasn't going to be a very long one it's just a a few thought processes that i'm sharing with you is that the concept of eating together in the mediterranean many people and this is portugal included portugal isn't in the mediterranean but it does follow a lot of these types of rules like when i see the mediterranean diet that's pretty much how we eat here except i feel like we definitely do eat more fattier cuts of meat more often but otherwise it's pretty much identical probably because we are like very close to loads of those countries Um, but you'll find a lot of countries in the mediterranean and i can relate to this again because my parents are portuguese and nowadays i live in portugal that a lot of mediterraneans they eat together during meals which i feel like is adding to the positive experience and the benefits of the mediterranean diet that you can take away from it and the reason why i bring this up is because I feel like it's a valuable suggestion for life in general, where eating with others can bring more mindfulness, which is very important when you're eating, because then you're more aware of your hunger signals, which can only be a good thing, because sometimes, you know, when we're eating alone, and maybe we're distracted by the television or our phone, then it's just very easy to overeat, because again, we're not as aware of our hunger signals, because we're distracted, whereas if we're eating with other people, you know, we're speaking more, we're more engaged, we're in the present, and that can make you more aware, and as well as that, the va- and you know what, before I go on to the next point, that allows you, you being more aware of your hunger, 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 hunger signals allows you to be more aware when you're full because you're giving you're you're naturally eating at a slower place because again you're with other people and therefore your brain and your body has more time to realize when it's full which probably allows you to eat less overall which you know sometimes might be a good thing um or eating i don't even want to say eat less i mean like eat a good amount for your body because then your body is realizing these fullness signals for example and then the next point i wanted to bring up was the value and the jo- and joy of eating with the people that you love as well which can boost your overall happiness and improving genuine connections in you know an increasingly digital isolated world which offers precious uninterrupted time with loved ones and perhaps providing the day's only real opportunity for deep conversations when you have this meal with the people that you love so while it may not be possible to share every meal with others due to busy schedules aiming for a meal with others even if it's just with one friend or partner perhaps two to three to four times weekly can only be helpful and if you must because maybe if you are very much by or i was going to say very much by yourself but that doesn't even sound like correct english but you get what i mean then you know make it over facetime if you must okay if you can ensure that you're free from digital interruptions while you're with these people then do so but if you can't and you don't have the luxury of being around anyone else then yeah facetime someone otherwise but otherwise that is pretty much it from me for this podcast episode you to you know i was going to say you probably didn't expect me to start speaking about eating with others but i do feel like it's a very important factor within the mediterranean culture around meal times and it just could not be not mentioned otherwise just to quickly recap so the mediterranean diet includes loads of vegetables fruits healthy fats seafoods you know some cheese yogurt and egg a little bit of chicken as well poultry and it also includes i feel like i missed something out so like uh, and whole grains and yeah healthy fats yeah so i mentioned all of that and um it doesn't mention anything about exclusion which i really like as well and i feel like permits for a much healthier mindset going in to you this eating approach it's not magical for fat loss so don't use it as a fat loss diet i wouldn't recommend that uh, because ultimately you have to be in a calorie deficit if you are living in a part of the world where it's quite challenging to follow the mediterranean diet that's okay just take inspiration from it otherwise and remember eating with people can be amazing so don't neglect the value of that oh yeah one more thing before i finish as well i do want to say that i don't really care if you do or don't follow the mediterranean diet of course i do feel like it is quite a good 
nutrition approach but I don't want anyone to start getting overly obsessed with eating in specific ways especially if it's very challenging to do like find a way that works for you best because ultimately the most successful diet or nutrition or yeah just nutrition approach that you will be able to stick with and sustain and feel healthy on is the one that you can be most consistent with as well okay because that's a a very important point and the reason why I want to emphasize I don't really care if you do or don't you know follow the Mediterranean diet is because I don't want to sound like I'm very invested in it either this was just a, a podcast covering the topic truth be told like I would say I do eat pretty similar to it but that's only because again I live in Portugal and my environment kind of just naturally sets me up to do that Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed listening to this. If you want a free workout plan, because actually at the time of recording this podcast episode, I just published a free workout plan on my website yesterday. And I feel like this is a really good workout plan. You know, my wife does graphic design and she helped put this together. So it looks nice as well. So you can grab that via the, one of the links in the show notes of this podcast episode. So if you want that, go and grab that, click on it and, uh, and it will take you to my website where you can grab that free workout plan. But otherwise, yeah, again, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. I hope you're more informed on the Mediterranean diet now. If you know someone who wants to find out more about it, then do share this podcast episode with them. And otherwise, take care and have a lovely rest of your day. That wraps it up for another episode of the Leo Alves podcast. I do hope you enjoyed listening to this episode. If you did, then please do consider sharing it with your friends, family, group chat, or even anyone else who you know could be interested in listening to that episode. Otherwise, if you haven't already, then please do leave a five star review on whichever platform you are listening to this on and remember all the relevant links such as the inquiry form to potentially become a Keros online member my social media handles a free fat loss guide and a free workout plan are all also found in the show notes of this podcast episode as well otherwise take care and i'll see you around